Okay, in this section, we're going to be talking about the precise definition of limit, and we're actually going to be proving limits. So, we have this situation set. We have the limit as x approaches x of 0 of f of x equals L. And that's the drawing that I have here. The open circle is x of 0 exactly that we're looking at. So, as I get closer and closer to x of 0 from both sides, that means that I'm going to be approaching my limit and this is the actual y value that it's going to be approaching. So we did some examples previously where we plugged numbers in and normally you just plug the number in and then as long as you're not dividing by zero you can just get the answer that way. Well we're going to be doing that in this section too except that we're actually going to be proving why that's true. So if I put a number in and I get an actual y value out I want to know why that's true. So Again, your calculus is kind of giving you a foundation in future math classes that you'll take when you get beyond the calculus series. Eventually, you're not going to be using numbers anymore and you're going to be proving all the different theorems and things that you've talked about before. That's basically what happens. So this section is kind of giving you an initial look, a kind of a foundation of working with a proof. So you're working one side down and you're working another side down uh, as well. And we'll take a look at that when we actually get into the examples. Now before we get into that, we need to set up some variables first. So what I have here is you notice that there is a Greek letter here, this is epsilon. So if I, basically what this is saying is that I might not be actually able to get to the limit or maybe I might have some kind of tolerance. So imagine if you're working in a factory and a machine is set to give a certain tolerance above or below a certain amount. That's basically what this would be, that epsilon represents an error in the y direction. So it might be slightly more than what my limit needs to be or slightly less than what it needs to be. Maybe you might have a diameter of something that you're working on in a factory and that diameter must be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. There must be a certain amount of tolerance that you can, uh, you can be in. That would be that difference there. Now of course if there's a difference in the y direction, there's going to be a difference in the x direction as well. So epsilon is the difference that you are in the y direction this letter here, this is delta, this is how much you're off in the x direction. So this means that you're slightly above the x of zero or slightly less than the x of zero. And again, the delta here is the difference in the x direction. So you kind of get um, a range of values here. If you're in between this range of values, this is kind of like an interval and we are going to talk about some problems where we're going to create some kind of interval. So you're between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. That means that you're automatically going to be between X of zero minus delta, X of zero plus delta. So if you're, as long as you're in this range here, you'll be in this range uh, in that direction. So that's basically the, the uh, describing the, the variables that we have here. So now we're going to talk about this statement down below that you're going to be using when you actually write your uh, proofs. This is saying, if there's an error in the y direction, then there's an error in the x direction. That's basically all that, that first line says. If my epsilon was equal to zero, that means that I'd be right at my limit and I'd be right at x of zero. There wouldn't be any error to talk about. So they're saying if there's an error in the x, there's going to be an error in the y direction. That's what the first part says. So it says if that's true, um, for each of that there exists this one such that if this is true, then this is true. So this is saying if there's an, a difference in the x direction, there's going to be a difference in the y direction. That's basically what that's saying. If I take a difference of something, the order is different if I switch it. If I take, for instance, 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 3, I'm going to get 1 and negative 1 as my answers. But if I take the absolute value of both of those, I'm going to get 1 uh, regardless. So the reason why we have absolute values here is because I want to make sure that if I subtract my x value from the x of 0, I'm going to end up getting a positive result. So if I'm a little bit more, a little bit less, my x value might actually be somewhere in this interval. It might be between x plus delta, it might be between x minus delta. So my x value, the x that's here represents some value that's in between here. So if I pick some value in between there and take a difference of it, that means that my difference would have to be greater than zero, but no more than delta. I'm not going to pick a value outside here. My x value I'm using has got to be in between here. So that means that my whatever x value I pick here, if I take a difference, if I take x minus xo or xo minus x, doesn't matter the order because we got the absolute value in there to give us a positive result. That means that whatever we get when we subtract it, 
it's got to be somewhere in between here. It's got to be greater than zero, but it can't be any more than uh, my delta. This says if, if that's true, if I have that situation set up in the x direction, that means then I have this situation going to be set up in the y direction. Okay, f of x would be the actual y value wherever I'm at along here, somewhere along here I'll be at. And so if I take that minus the L, again I'm considering a positive difference there because I'm doing the absolute value. So as long as I'm in between here, if I pick some f of x value in this interval between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon, that means that, that when I take that difference, it's got to be greater than zero, of course, also, um, but it's got to be less than epsilon. So that's basically what the definition actually says. It's describing these errors that we have in each case. So again, think of this as like a tolerance level. If I have some kind of tolerance in this direction, that means I have a tolerance in the x direction as well. So these are, can, be, can be considered errors. You're just slightly off of where your x of zero and your l actually is.